Hello, welcome back to another episode. As the episode opens, Cody arrives at Van Ritt's factory to interview for the position of his secretary. Van Ritt realizes right away that she is more than capable of doing the task. Instead of employing her, he sends his goon, Eustace, instead, who uses a cattle prod to put Cody to sleep. When she awakens, she must stay there for around seven days as a contender in a pageant, Van Ritt cryptically informs her. When Cody tries to leave, she finds that every door and window have been locked. The dolls come to life after Eustace and Van Ritt have left. It is discovered that Van Ritt has also kidnapped them. Some interview candidates showed up much like Cody did. Van Ritt focused on others. The former spouse of Van Ritt had an affair. When he learned, he ordered Eustace to kill the woman and her boyfriend by plunging them into a nearby well. The other girls inform Cody that Otis' new mother will be chosen by the pageant's winner. Orelia, one of the girls, is quite hostile towards Cody because she thinks it is unjust that she is allowed to participate at this point in the tournament. Just before Cody's arrival, there are other girls, but they were all killed and tossed into the well, but not necessarily in that order. The girls are put to the test each time Van Ritt stops by, whether Otis is there or not. They must first be spoken to before speaking. Each test results in the death of one of the girls. Van Ritt is unaware of Cody's apparent superpowered ability, which she utilizes to earn Otis' favor. They realize they must at least attempt to go when only Cody, Orelia, and another girl, Harleen, are left. They divert attention with the genuine dolls that are present in the home, while Cody uses her skills to open the front door. As soon as they are outside, the other girls run away, but Cody resolves to save Otis. The other girls are captured and killed by Eustace, making Cody the victor. Later, Van Ritt admits that he implanted listening devices in some of the dolls and was aware of the girl's escape strategy. He chose to use it as the final assessment. She won the competition when Cody returned for Otis. After that, he wraps her in plastic to make a doll out of her. The plot of the show will undoubtedly make viewers think of the Stepford Wives, even if Dollhouse is not very subtle. Van Ritt represents the patriarchal. The one with the most points at the end will be discarded. And materialistic culture that claims to want to enslave women and make them into emotionless mannequins. Toward the end of the episode, the presence of the two witches, who appear to represent feminist individuality, supports this idea. Before lighting Van Ritt's house on fire and murdering both Van Ritt and Eustace, they rescue Cody and take her and Otis away. Cody later takes Otis to Miss Robichox's Academy for Exceptional Young Ladies, where he gives him the advice to use his middle name. Otis then changes his name to Spalding. When a red-haired girl exits the building, Spalding quickly makes her a friend. She identifies herself as Myrtle Snow. In American Horror Stories, Coven, the third season, Myrtle Snow and Spalding play a critical role. In actuality, Denny O'Hare plays the former. He has played many roles in American Horror Stories, just like a number of other Murphy-verse performers. The main location of Coven is Miss Robichox's Academy for Exceptional Young Ladies, where Spalding is the butler. A sanctuary and school for Salem witches, Miss Robichox's Academy is situated in New Orleans, Louisiana. In Coven, Spalding hosts tea parties for his own doll collection. Frances Conroy portrays an older Myrtle Snow. She is a strong witch who can conjure spells of truth. Despite the fact that they appear to become childhood friends in Dollhouse, they will end up on opposing sides in the first season. Spalding is in love with Fiona Good, his mistress, there. Myrtle is right to assume Spalding knows the truth when Fiona kills one of the other witches, so she performs an enchantment spell over his mouth. Spalding, though, gags himself to keep from saying anything damaging about Fiona. Thanks for watching. Comment below. And don't forget to subscribe.